Okay, guys, so now today we are going to get into the Southern song, the second half of the song from 1127 to 1279, still holding on, and let's talk about kind of how they're going to continue this next part of the history here. Um, so again, they're from 1127 to 1279, and so they have been defeated by the Jinn, and so what do they do now? Well, they're going to move south, and they are going to hang out primarily in this area here. You see the Jinn are here. Okay, the new capital is going to be at Hangzhou. Um, here is the Jinn and all these other groups, but let's just look who's up here. This is going to be an important thing in the future. All right, so they now need to shift things, and really it is even more vital for them to have an important economy, okay? So they're going to do some, you know, new things to bolster the economy as well as to protect themselves against the Jinn in the North, and I'll talk about some different things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is shipbuilding and harbor improvements. Um, they're going to make some newer ships, uh, the Chinese junks. We're going to talk about that, and we'll show those more uh, at a separate one. They're also going to use like magnetic compasses and stuff like that. They're going to create uh, beacons and warehouses. Like, so here's like a warehouse here. Okay. And more areas for ships to dock. Uh, here's a picture of a junk up here. And the idea is having more harbors, more modern harbors, so we can bring in ships with the new types of ships and really expand out of, uh, into predominantly the the South China Sea okay and a lot of this in order to do this is they're going to create a standing navy all right now under the song they're going to massively expand so here are the the junks up here and these junks are going to be able to sail basically anywhere I have here seas and rivers and I'll get to that in a second but what I have up here is what I want to explain is that these groups will go to the East China Sea, they'll go into the Yellow Sea, they'll go to Korea and Japan, they'll go into Southeast Asia, eventually the Indian Ocean, and Chinese junks will be seen as far away as the Red Sea. And that's going to be part of the Silk Road trade stuff that I'm going to talk about, and that's going to be a separate set of videos, but just understanding massively expanding these ships. And then the, also, the other part of this is not just merchants, is that we have to defend themselves. So that China creates one of the world's first standing navies in the east. Okay, yes, you had, you know, earlier areas, but I'm specifically talking about Eastern Asia here. Um, they're going to be active both in the sea and in rivers, okay? Uh, for instance, if you look on the bottom right there, that is a paddle wheel boat that the Chinese would invent, and that's um, something that they would use extensively on the sea. And as you can see here, it's got these would be some trebuchets or like kind of catapulty type things as well as uh, that had gunpowder bombs. Um, they would also um, be able to shoot cannon from these ships. Uh, really, really successful. Um, they would defeat the Jin early and often and... One of the reasons why the Jin will kind of stay where they're at is because of the Navy of the Chinese. And this concept of the Navy, I want you to remember, this is going to be a big theme moving forward because the Navy is super important. And also, you're going to need military forces. So the Navy are the guys that run and operate the ships, and then they're going to have the Marines, much like the United States of America. The Marines, their job are going to be forces to not only defend the ships, but also... Um, armed forces when you land places that can do the fighting as well. And so this is pretty, pretty impressive. Trade is also going to be super important. Um, the Silk Roads are going to be really uh, reinvigorated. Um, really during the Tang and the Song, and another group of responsible for that will be the Abbasids uh, over in the Middle East, and we'll talk about them later. Um, this will be land and sea routes as well. Um, China is going to be exporting things like porcelain, tea, and silk. Silk, of course, the big one, hence the name of the Silk Roads. Again, that's going to be a separate video. Um, their technology that will also spread will be the compass, paper, and gunpowder, and as you see on the bottom here, we're going to get the use of paper money. Because um, here's the deal. Uh, copper coins and gold coins or silver coins, I mean, they're just too unwieldy to carry, 
particularly in large amounts. Can't have it. And so what they're going to do is they're going to use paper money or flying cash um, in lieu of that. Now, the this would not be... Um, this paper money isn't, interestingly enough, done by the government. Rather, it's done by private banks first. Now, eventually, the federal government will come to control it, as will it control in the world. But this is a much easier way to, you know, transport the money. And, and it's, it, it changes, okay? And it absolutely changes. However... It will be relatively short-lived. Yes, their ships are going all over the place. Yes, their economy is going through the roof. Yes, just everything is great. Everything is great. But then in 1205, the Mongols are coming. They start by invading the Jin Empire to the north. And... Unfortunately, this this actually sets up China in a, in a in a bad way because not a lot of other empires liked the Jin, whether it was the Uyghurs or the, the what was left of the Khitans, the Tibetans, and of course the Song. They don't like the Jin, and so actually early on, the Song will ally with the Mongols, and they have no problem fighting the Jin. Despite the Jin explaining the, the, the atrocities, explaining the destruction, explaining all this craziness, um, they don't care because they hated the Jin. And in 1241, they would be successful, and the Mongols take over the Jin, and the song, they're like, yeah, this is totally cool, but no, it's not, because then the invasion of China will begin shortly after that. Now, China, to their credit, holds out the longest. Um, the Mamluk empires over in Egypt will also be successful in beating the Mongols as well, the Battle of Anjalut, we'll talk about that later. But China had all the stuff that the, the Mongols wanted. And yes, the Mongols will go all the way, to, we'll talk about how they beat up everybody in the Middle East and in Europe and all that type of stuff. And it's amazing how small numbers they had, but, China had everything that they wanted. And so if there was an area that the Mongols were going to focus on the most, it's going to be China. The Mongols always had the bulk of their forces there, the bulk of their cavalry, the bulk of their commanders were in China. And then by 1279, China will fall to the Mongols. And that will be an end to the Song Dynasty. So... Lots of battling for the song up and down, had some really interesting, um, you know, innovations to try to help themselves. Uh, huge on the economic front, one of the reasons why the Mongols wanted them. But in the end, like so many other people in Asia, they will fall as well. Now, in our succeeding videos, uh, we are going to be talking about religion in China during this particular time. And I'll also get into the culture and achievement of, achievements of the song. Just kind of wanted to focus on some core basic history, okay? All right, guys, I'll see you soon.